Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Faith Positive Nation, you, know, you, you go shopping like I do. Uh, actually, I don't shop. I hunt. I go in, back my prey, and leave. But I mean, you go to uh, college dorms or college campuses. You go into office buildings all the time. Do you ever just stop for a minute, scratch your head? Obviously, I scratch mine a lot. Scratch your head and say to yourself, who built this building? Do you even think about that? Somebody built that building. Now, who is that somebody? What are they like? How do they run their business? What are the challenges? And what is it like to be president of a Christian construction company? Today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about because today's guest owns his own business. He owns H.M. Kern, that's K-E-R-N, that's located in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they're a construction company. And Todd Hodges is the owner of H.M. Kern, and he joins us today so that we can get a glimpse inside the life of what it is to run your own construction company as a Christian. Faith Positive Nation, help me welcome Todd Hodges. Todd, welcome to Faith Positive Radio, buddy. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joe. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me today. Uh, glad to be here uh, with you. Uh, so do people ever say to you anything like, hey, Todd, you build that building, did you build this building, what building did you build? Uh, we do from occasion, yes. People will ask us, uh, or they, when they find out H.M. Kern, they can say, well, we've seen that sign, we've seen your name, and then we kind of go through projects that uh, that they may be familiar with and find out that there's projects that uh, we have actually constructed or had a part in the uh, renovation process with that uh, that they recognize. So uh, from time to time, we do, yes. That's pretty cool when somebody says, hey, man, I was in your building, right? <laughs> It, it is. It's really, it's really good. And, and then um, I get, I guess, a lot of the joy I have is uh, when I'm with my kids driving by saying, we built that building or we built that one or, you know, pointing them out to them too. So, uh, but it is, it's, it's a rewarding, uh, it's a rewarding thing when somebody notices, uh, not just the building you did, but they've used the building or, you know, make a comment about, Hey, it's a beautiful building. And we've done some churches that same type of way that, uh, you know, people find out that we built it and, Sometimes they're members that didn't realize who built the building, and that's that's always rewarding. Man, that must be very rewarding to build a house of worship. Uh, it is. It, it really is. To just know as you go through that project that God's going to be worshipped there. It is. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, um, yeah, I guess you know it just really is a humbling experience. I guess to mm. to know that uh, what you're doing, putting this building together, and you know that lives will be changed and people will. Uh, come to know Christ and just based on, you know, having a small part of building the building itself, which, you know, is, is not the church of course, but uh, it's the meeting place. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot of reward from that. Mm, man, I'm sure it is. So as the owner of HM Kern, how do you spend your time each day? I mean, you don't have a hammer in your hand, do you? Uh, no, uh, not at this point, I, I guess at home. <laughs> <laughs> Um, of course, I would like to get on the job sometimes and do that, and, and that that's that would be that would be fun. But it it varies from day to day, from um, reviewing upcoming projects that we're pursuing, uh, working with their estimating group uh, to work prices together to to uh, to pro- you know for proposals, or working with uh, vice president of operations who is more involved with the day to day construction part of it, or the financial end, or you know, watching all of those things and, you know, keeping relationships with insurance companies, bonding companies, and, you know, all of the different parts that it takes to, uh, you know, to, to have uh, an operating company. Mm. Uh, it, it varies every day. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the things I like about it, that every day is different. And, uh, and you do get some surprises during the day too, which, you know, always kind of make that uh, a challenge and uh, I enjoy a challenge. And um, so every day is, who knows? You have a plan for when <laughs> the office uh, <laughs> things change sometimes, and sometimes you're finished and you realize, well, well, I didn't even do what I had planned. I'll do that tomorrow. But um, yeah. but it is uh, it it's fun. I enjoy it. 
Yeah. So you have your plan laid out, but you have to be responsive to things that emerge in that day. Uh, it just seems like to me, because I, I coach uh, you and several other construction related uh, owners, it just seems like to me, at least there was when I first came into understanding your industry, uh, man, there's a ton of stuff that goes into building a building that I'm going to say the average person just doesn't understand. Right. What are some of the moving parts? Cause there's so many, but what are some of the moving parts that you think people just don't comprehend? Well, a lot of, um, well, just to, you take just the actual pricing of a job. I mean, it's just, you have to, uh, and we call it an estimate for a reason. It's not an exact. <laughs> you mean just cause you wrote it down and put it on a piece of paper, that's not exactly what it's going to cost me. Right. And you know, one of the things that, that I tell people is, uh, people, if you think about what we do, it's, it's kind of crazy in that we will take a, a site that as you drive by is trees or a hill or, or, or a gully. And we give you a price, not only a price, but a time frame of we can turn that into a building, whether it's an office building or church or whatever it is. And um, that's what we get paid. And then we have to deliver it in so many months or days or whatever and um to think that we actually put a number on that from from a you know from a forest sometimes <laughs> baffling that we can actually do that we call it tree <laughs> keys uh we uh, used to keys that's pretty cool man that, that's the kind of thing that we try to say that, that that we you know that we do provide a service we provide but some of the other parts are getting down to the details and uh, mm. that's where it um it really makes a difference in the success of a project. Um, and that's figuring out the, say the mechanical, the heating and air conditioning system that is compatible with, with the size of the building or, or the steel members and making sure bolted connections fit properly so that the building is square and plumb. And, and there's a lot of drawings and details that we go through before we ever hit the site uh, to build it on paper, to make sure everything's going to fit when it comes out. Mm. And that's probably one of the biggest things that people just don't realize all of that work that's behind the scenes. And, uh, and for me, I enjoy that. I'm a detailed person, um, engineering, civil engineering background. And so those are the things that, that I really enjoy. However, that's how I started and uh, did a lot of that coming into the business. Uh, and now, I don't get as much chance to do that anymore because I'm uh, having relationships and keeping that with uh, insurance companies and, you know, making all the things and uh, to run the business. But uh, uh, those, um, I oversee some of that, but the actual details, it's, it's a lot that goes into a building. Oh yeah, it really is. I love that trees to keys uh, metaphor that, that really covers it. So, how in the world do you estimate both price and timeline accurately or, or even close and going from trees to keys? How do you do that? I well, mean, is it experience or what? Well, a lot of it's experience. Yes. Um, and, and experience that we put into a database, we have some estimating software that um, we set up. It's basically a, a glorified type spreadsheet um, based on almost like Excel, but it has a database of when we take off and that's quantify. Uh, certain items, then we pull from that database uh, historical that pricing data that we enter through our experience so mm -hmm. that it comes up with a number for if you're framing a wall, for instance. Uh, it can help you to calculate the number of studs and what studs are going to cost and the labor uh, being one of the biggest components of, you know, how long does it take to frame a wall that's 20 foot long that's 10 foot tall. Um, that's just based on some of the data we have. And and we take all of that and compile it together as well as some of our subcontractor prices, the plumbing, mechanical, electrical, some of those trades, put all that together and uh, come up to a bottom on the spreadsheet, and <laughs> put a little bit of fee on it and, and go for it. Yeah. It sounds like a, a lot like making sausage to me. It really, it really. <laughs> yeah. I say that it is a whole, and then the, the finished product is uh, something very good. So, oh, um, wow. so and it, so it's just more experience probably and mm. just that background using your experience to establish that database. Mm. So how did you get into the construction industry? Because obviously it's an experience-based 
industry, you have to start somewhere. How did you get started in construction? Um, it goes back to my dad. Um, he was a he was the superintendent for a general contractor. Uh, superintendent, he was the guy that he was the man that was on the site every day on a particular job, building that job. And um, we always had not just chores but odd projects that he would do on the weekends that uh, my brother and I had to help him with, whether it was an addition on a house or uh, building a shed somewhere, or always had us doing some of that same uh, side work for him. And uh, so I guess the, you know, the love of it came from that. Uh, then I've got other uh, grandfather that was a carpenter too. So it, it was in my blood. Um, and then when I went to school, I was actually, um, my thought was to go into aerospace engineering because I love flying and I love planes. And um, you know, just uh, I feel like the Lord spoke to me at the a couple years or so into college, and I don't know. I just felt like that construction was where I felt was best for me, and mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up uh, going into uh, civil engineering, but always with the idea that I wanted to build buildings. So, okay, all right, cool. You said the Lord spoke to you. Uh, you mm -hmm. thought you were going into aerospace. The Lord spoke to you. What was that experience like? Do you? Share that with us. Well, it was, um, I said it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you how long ago it was. Man. Um, <laughs> You're well, pretty almost, bald, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> like <but>, me. <laughs> right. You know, part of it is, um, I think that, you know, I love flight. Now, I wanted to do something aeronautical, and uh, if I couldn't fly a plane, I wanted to maybe build them. But, and so I, I had that idea, but then, you know, I always loved construction and, you know, I just praying about it at that point and trying to figure out, you know, what is it that, uh, that the Lord would have me to do. And, hmm. and a lot of it was, um, also being in a community and loving the community of where I'm at and where I'm from and realizing that, you know, the aerospace could take me anywhere. And I really didn't want to do that travel. Okay. Um, just, um, you know, I can't really say when it was. I, my brother was already in construction, so I guess some of the part that I had taken me away from it was not to follow what he did. Hmm. But finally, I just said, you know, Lord, this is, I feel like this is where you want me. Uh, so that's where I'm going. And uh, regardless of the fact that it's what the family had done, my brother was there, but I said, that's okay. Um, you know, I can go do it too. And hmm. uh, so I then focused my efforts toward uh engine civil engineering and the construction end. So, mm -hmm. so God called you into the construction business. Did you ever, when, when you got the call, so to speak, did you mm -hmm. see yourself owning your own business or what did you envision out of God's call for you? Um, I did, uh, actually, um, because I always wanted to be in charge of the project that's, that's, that's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. I always, I would be able to take all of the parts and put it together and, and, and build buildings. And I, you know, I, I can't really explain why I felt that way, but I always felt like, yeah, I want to own my own business and construction's a good thing. I know it. It's, it's fun. It's outdoors mixed with some indoor office work, which coming up also in the farming background, I just, I love the outdoors. So, um, it just, I, it just seemed to fit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think part of seeing my dad do the side jobs and he seemed to be happier doing those than he did going to work and working for somebody else. And then the farming mentality too, where you work for yourself um, mm -hmm. in my background. And so it just seemed natural that that's, wow. that's what I should do. Yeah. So God called you into construction and then you understood your divine design. That is the way the good Lord knit you together in your mother's womb that you were supposed to own your own business and be in charge. So obviously your faith has driven you from the moment you entered the construction business. How does your faith impact your day-to-day -day work, Todd? Um, well, it's, uh, it, it can be a stressful occupation if you allow it to be. Um, and just uh, trusting God that uh, he's there for you and he's going to be there and he's going to provide for you um, is the foundation of it. It's, you know, there's a lot of things that can bring you down and uh, losing a job that you thought you were going to get that uh, could have been a, you know, what you, what you perceive as, wow, this could be a great job for us. And then having to look at it and say, well, it's not meant to be. Uh, and, um, and you let those go. Well, if you, you know, if you found yourself harboring that too much, then 
that could cause you to mess up on the next job. And so often we see those jobs that we really wanted, that we thought we just would be perfect for us. Six months down the road, whoever has the job, it's a bad owner. There's something going wrong. And you're like, wow, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because <laughs> that wasn't what we needed. So, yeah. Almost so like God knew more about what you needed than you did, right? And when you have those examples, and it's it makes it a little bit, you know, your faith grows. And you're like, hmm. you got this. You know what's best for us. And, and continuing to pray to, you know, not just for a job, but a profitable job that's good for the company you know, being specific in that prayer, that we want a job that's going to be good, make money, that we will be able to be successful at, not just praying for a job, because you just don't want every job. So mm -hmm. um, using, you know, faith in that part, and then just the day-to-day, -day, once the project is under construction, there's, there's all kinds of um, things, uh, people to deal with, subcontractors, sometimes owners, architects, weather, there's so many things that impact uh, and can can guide and change the the project that you just have to um, you know have faith and pray about it and uh, just hang in there I guess and work <laughs> and, and, and yeah I think that's where a lot of um, being a Christian and having faith will help deal with situations with disagreements with subcontractors or owner because you can sit down and and really just sit back a little bit and think about things before you speak and um, use that knowledge to, to kind of guide through a, something that could be a, a tough situation. You can guide through it a little bit easier and navigate through it and end up with um, all parties being, you know, uh, pleased with the outcome. And hmm. so, it, you know, trusting God to help you through that really, uh, really does help. Yeah. Trusting God. So how did you develop this trust in God? Because it seems like to I me, mean, most of us, especially business owners, we want to control things. And in your particular instance, you just mentioned the weather. Everybody talks about the weather. Nobody does anything about it. <laughs> so, so, okay. Let's say we can't control the weather, but still that, that affects your timeline, that estimate that you put together. You can't, can't dig footings if um, it's monsoon season, right? So all these things occur and people being people how did you learn to trust God? Cause you said it like it's a natural part of who you are and knowing you as well as I do. I know that it is, but I mean, you just didn't, didn't wake up one day and say, I think I'm gonna trust God with all this. No, I mean, it's, it's an everyday thing. I mean, it's something that every day you have to wake up and when you get up, you have a decision to make of how am I going to take this day? And, and uh, you know, it's trust God that he's going to take care of you. And uh, as long as you're faithful to him and you, you know, you trust in his uh, will and not own. Um, I guess to answer the question a little bit better, it's it's a continual thing. It just, you know, I think it happened one day. It just, it, you, it do it every day. But then through experience and know that uh, having the peace that, you know, it's going to be okay, um, then that helps you to have more trust going forward. And it's, you know, there are times where it's tough. I mean, especially when, when we need projects and you know, revenue, you know, we, we, we have our backlog and that backlog being the, the book of work that we have to do is going down. We're finishing a lot of projects. You've got a lot of people. We've got uh, over 35 employees and where are they going to go? I mean, their families are counting on them having a job to go to. So it, it can wear on you about, okay, we've got to get another project. And, and then you think, you know, we, we need this project and you don't get it and you don't get the next one. And, you know, it's, it's tough. And, uh, that's the times that you really just have to know that, um, you know, well, we didn't get, God didn't bring us this far to not, uh, be with us continuing on. So, uh, you just work a little harder, um, pray a little more. And, and it's been great for me that, uh, our employees and I've, um, had, uh, some experiences with some of our employee spouses where they, they tell me that, you know, they're praying for the company. And, mm. and when you have that, it just like, you know, I'm not the only one praying, you know, <laughs> my wife is the only one praying along with me, but, but also employees and employee spouses. And, and when you hear that, it just, you know, it, it makes you work a little bit harder. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it is just, um, just trusting in, trusting in the Lord. I mean, just, uh, so. So how do you attract people who, who say to you and their spouses say to you, Hey Todd, we're praying for HM Kern. 
how do you attract those people to come work for you? I don't know. Um, you know, <laughs> um, I think it's just um, representing who we are as a company. I, I think that uh, mm. people, you know, see who we are and see how we conduct business. And, um, you know, uh, we try to be uh, honest and, and, and have integrity in what we do in our work. And, you know, um, we just, I don't know. We just end up with with good people that way, and and people say, I, you know, I've heard a lot of times you, you hire people that are a lot like you. Um, so I guess people I attract people like myself, where I feel comfortable with those people, and you know, it, it's worked out well. So um, that's the Lord's doing. I mean, it's yeah. I I can't say that it's me. It's um, hmm. He brought to us, and uh, hmm. you know, you pray for that and pray for that clarity that you hire the right people. Um, hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, and those are big decisions when it comes to hiring people, isn't it? It is. I mean, it, it can, because uh, it impacts everybody, you know, not just the company, but everybody in the company and the people that have to work for, work <laughs> with the person. So it, it's a huge decision. And, um, you know, we try not to take it too lightly. And, you know, we, we've we had great success and we've got a lot of uh, longevity here. We've got employees that have been here, you know, 15, 20 years or more. And, mm. uh, you know, that's that's rewarding to have a, a, a tight knit group of people that have been together for a long time. Mm, man, it must be because you really are able to form team then, and that becomes your dream team. And, and so you, you know how to work together and how to do that dance. Well, you, you, you've talked about trusting God. Um, really what you're talking about is trusting God in the midst of challenges. Tell us specifically some of the challenges you face as the owner of a construction company. Um, Hmm. Well, some of what I said earlier with, you know, keeping the backlog of work, making mm -hmm. sure we have projects for the employees to go to when one is finished. Um, another challenge is to, to keep in the owner, I mean, the owners uh, satisfied with the, the end product that they're getting, wanting to make sure that, you know, it's meet or exceeds their expectations when they hired us and mm -hmm. that, you know, the project and the building is going to work for, for what they in, you know, or plan to use it for. So those are challenges that we face. And then just, um, I guess just day-to-day -day employment, keeping enough people, uh, good qualified people, good qualified subcontractors. Um, that's been a big challenge for us is, uh, especially with, as the economy goes up and down, you have more subcontractors when it's good. And then when things go down, a lot of them decide to get out of the business. So then it's hard to find uh, good qualified subcontractors when when you need them again and um, so uh, that's been a, a challenge for us too and you just just have to navigate through it and do the best you can with it and find you know find good qualified ones that uh, we use uh, we use quite a bit but we do you know we don't use the same ones all the time so so that we don't end up with uh, overworking or putting an overload on some of the subcontractors so that balance is sometimes a challenge that we have. Mm. I know a couple of your core values, Todd, are honesty and integrity. Tell me how you live out of that in, in your faith at work, honesty and integrity. Well, one of the things that, that I like to tell myself, uh, remind myself every morning and pray about is to, to do the right thing every time. You know, if you always do the right thing, uh, then you're going to be okay. Whatever it is, when you... When you're faced with the situation, you just do the fair, right thing. And, you know, sometimes that may mean that, okay, well, I think that this owner is due this, even though mm. maybe we didn't include it in our price, but we should have. And if that's the case, then we're going to perform that work. Um, so always do the right thing. And, um, and then to try to make a difference every day, you know, make a difference somewhere in somebody's life or, whoever it is, whether it's a, uh, an employee, a subcontractor, an owner, uh, just somehow try to make a difference in their life um, by saying something, by doing the right thing, whatever it is. And, you know, focusing on those things every day and, um, you know, praying for that opportunity that that mm. person along. And, uh, you know, um, so that's kind of try to start each day that way. 
Yeah. Well, you're involved in philanthropy in your various communities as well. I mean, you, you talk about making a difference. You, you and your company, HM Kern, proactively seek that out. Talk about some of those mission and ministry efforts that you're involved in. Um, well, we have over, uh, over several years. I mean, first of all, a lot of our employees uh, have gone on mission trips. Uh, you know, some have done uh, trips in Puerto Rico and to Haiti and from foreign lands. And then we also have uh, some of our employees that do um, like Baptist men group, you know, and work on um, flooded houses and things of that nature to, uh, to help out. And we've supported those. And sometimes when you know, they're going during the week. We'll just say, look, you just you don't have to take a vacation day. You go. Uh, it's where you're needed. Go go help and do what you can. Mm-hmm. Um, so we support that. And then we've supported, um, you know, uh, not just our church, but um, other churches and any type of mission and type work in the community. Uh, we've been involved with helping with food banks. Um, you know, uh, they had a like a can sculpt one time where we had to go build a structure. And of course we had to build a big bridge structure for <laughs> many cans of food and then ideas. And then we got together as an office and we all went and uh, instead of going and getting the donations, we just bought it. We just bought the food because we needed certain cans to do it <laughs> for, the, for the shapes. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't want a, a can of yams and then a soup can. You had to have specific cans to build out this bridge. Uh, Detail oriented, right? right? That's right. So, <laughs> um, so we, you know, we, we are involved with things like that's good because it's also team building for the uh, employees, mm. uh, but then also is, is a good thing for the community and, and helping out. And, and there's just, um, that's just a name of few, but um, we, we're involved with um, some of the, the kids, you know, some of the kids and uh, like local stuff with um, livestock shows. We support kids in doing that when they, uh, are doing showmanship in different areas with cattle shows. And, um, you know, I, I can't think of what all we do, but it, it's, we try. I mean, and one of the things that we want to do is to be able to, to give not just back to the community, but to make a difference and do what we can do so that we can show people uh, Christ in us. And then they can actually see Christ through, you know, if it's a mission or, or whatever it is that, you know, I feel like it's, my job you know i have this job uh so that i can so that i can go and do and give uh to promote christ and and it's um you know it's i feel like that that i that i'm supposed to, that's my talent and i'm using mm-hmm. my talents to either go and do work physically but also you know profits sharing profits of what we have to go and support things and and that's how i've you know seen my uh life as the what my purpose is. Mm. So your purpose is to share Christ through HM Kern. Mm. Wow. Through, yeah, through various avenues. Right, right, man. That's beautiful. Well, you're reminding me of Colossians 3:23, where Paul encourages us to do everything that we do with excellence as unto the Lord, not just for people. Now, I hope that's not your favorite Bible verse because <laughs> but if it is, it's okay. I just said it for you. Uh, so faith positive nation always wants to know about it from our guest about what their favorite Bible verse is. What's yours, Todd Hodges? Well, there's so many that I have, but I really, uh, Psalms 4610, and, and it, you know, the first part of that is peace and uh, be still and know that I'm God. And for me, it's, um, I just really enjoy a long time to when I can just go and just, just take it in and, and mm. just really, God has done this. He's put all of this and not, if, not just in front of me in terms of, you know, a beautiful landscape or a sunset, but just wherever I am, just to be able to take that time and just know that, you know, everything is possible through, through God, through Christ. And, and just to take that time and to just allow, you know, God to speak to me. Mm. I, it's just the, um, my, not just my favorite verse and what it says, but also to be able to experience it, to go and be still and then just, just listen. Mm. And, you know, yeah. so that, is it a challenge for you to be still? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it, it, it's sometimes it can be with, uh, with everything that it requires to, to have the, not just the growing family, but also with the construction company and, and all the different people. But, um, you know, I seek it. I seek stillness. Mm-hmm. I, I, that in my, in me, and especially after I've 
maybe several weeks or a couple of months of real hectic, I can really feel that I just need some stillness. Mm. And, and then when I go and I can just sit and, you know, some people probably say, what's wrong with the guy? But I would just, <laughs> you know, whether it's sitting on a beach or sitting on the porch at home and just staring out into the field. And it's just, um, you know, just those times that, that I real feel, a, feel that connection with God of that, you know, this is, this is good. I mean, this is what, what it's all about and, hmm. and understanding that, you know, uh, the magnificent nature of God and, and what he does for us. And, hmm. you know, if, be good soul, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be good soul and hmm. I can just be good soul and then grow. And, and then, you know, then there's a you know, harvest for me for what I do. Then, then that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Wow. Yeah. Being good soil, man, that, there's a, a life goal, right? Let me be good soil that Christ is planting seed in. Todd Hodges is owner of HM Current Construction Company located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Todd, somebody in Faith Positive Nation is listening to this or watching this. They're going to want to reach out to you. Is there an email address where they can reach out to you? Um, yes, we're located. Uh, well, email is thodges at hmkern.com. And Kern is spelled how? It's K E R N. Okay. T. Hodges at hmkern.com and your website's hmkern.com? hmkern.com and there's uh, an area there where you can contact us through also. Okay. All right. Awesome. And all this information as it always is, is in our episode copy. So if you're driving down the road, listening to this or on a treadmill somewhere or even walking the dog, right? Because I know you love to walk with your dog, <laughs> right? In the stillness. Uh, it's all right there. So all you got to do is click it and write on. Uh, thank you so much for the gift of your time today, Todd. Um, I know it's been a thrill for me, and I'm sure it has the entire Faith Positive Nation to hear you talk about, in such a spirit of humility, what God's doing through your construction company, H.M. Kern, the dedication and commitment. And I know I've learned a lot from you today about how to trust God in the midst of the uncontrollables in life. So thank you for the gift of your wisdom and your time. We just really pray God's blessings on you, your company, your incredible wife, and wonderful family. Thank you for the gift of your time and wisdom today, Todd. Well, well, thank you for having us, and, and thank you for all that you do, and, and I really appreciate um, Faith Positive and and, uh, and and what all you do for us. Thank mm. you, Doc. Thanks, Todd. Take care, brother. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.